Hello and welcome to our viewers on cruxambassador.com. We spoke earlier today with Brad Langeel, he's the CEO of Go Gold Resources. They're a gold producer down in Mexico. We talked to him about taking advantage of mining cycles and just how quickly they worked out what the loss recourse asset was and exactly what they're doing about it. Needless to say, he's pretty excited about it. We also asked him about what he's doing for the retail market and what his deliverables are until the end of the year. If you want to look at any of those topics, look in the description below and click on the relevant timestamp. And for those of you new to Crux Investor, please click the button in the corner of the screen and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hi, Brad. How are you? Good. Great. Fantastic. Great. How are you? Not bad. Not bad. Now, we spoke back in April. Uh, you gave us an introduction to the company then. Uh, it's a new story to us. Love to get a catch up. Uh, have, a, sorry, have a catch up with you now about how things have moved since then. So why don't you kick off? Give people who haven't heard the story before one minute summary. Okay. Um, well, uh, Go Gold is a Mexico centered company. Um, it's really all about the team. Uh, the main um, uh, team players here uh, for me have been with me most of them uh, decade, decade and a half. Uh, Twenty two years in Mexico building mines. Um, Three mines built, um, plus one that we took over and, and majorly uh, uh, increased, uh, doubled the production. Uh, so we have a lot of experience in open pit mining, underground mining, uh, a, lot of, a lot of experience with the team in um, finding and developing assets. Recently, we've sold uh, one of our assets to Nico Eagle for 90, $95 million US uh, in three years, a great uh, gain for us. Um, and currently, we're, uh, we have one operating mine the Corral Tailings Retreatment, and we have uh, Exploration Development Asset, which is uh, our Los Ricos. Right. Well, why don't you tell us about Los Ricos? Because what I'd like to get into is trying to understand your, your thinking um, around, you know, timing the cycle and, you know, timing the exit bit, right? So t tell people a bit about Los Ricos, because, you, you, I mean, you're quite passionate about it last time we spoke. Yeah, um, Los Ricos, um, in my mind and my experience in Mexico, uh, my 27 years in the mining business, is really, I believe, one of, if not the best, uh, undeveloped asset in uh, Mexico. It's, it's at the uh, drill stage, but, and I'll touch on this in a moment, um, it's exploration drilling, but in a sense, it's brownfields drilling. Mm -hmm. And why I call it brownfields drilling, even though we went in there and we inherited 65 legacy holes, is that we, um, we've drawn a lot of history here. And the asset has um, a tremendous history, first by the Spanish, who found it back in the 1500s. Um, and they did a bit with it, but not major, it wasn't on a major mine. Mm -hmm. It was an industrial family from uh, the US uh, called the Daly family, uh, Marcus Daly um, and Marcus Daly Jr. Marcus Daly Sr. was the founder of Anaconda, a very, very famous um, uh, U.S. copper producer uh, that was, and he was one of the copper barons. Well, his son and his brother-in-law went to Mexico in 1908. And because of his connection, the brother-in-law, he was an ambassador for the U.S., an ambassador to Germany in, in uh, 1917, not a very good time to be an ambassador to Germany, course world war one but he also had very tight relations with the federal mexican government they were in a civil war uh in from 1910 on um and he was able to get this asset from his connections so they went in there in 1908 they developed a mine and the mine till 1929 they mined over a million ounces and in an underground mine um very very high grades uh what they left behind was uh 25 meter wide ore zone, and they took two to four meters of it out. So that's what we're after. And that's what we're uh, developing to a bulk mineable um, open pit. Um, why I say it's brownfields is because history is critical in this. Um, history being that, um, you know, we have uh, a gentleman in our uh, company, um, uh, David Duncan. He's our man, uh, manager of exploration. And he's a real history buff. So when he heard the Marcus Daly family, he went back into the history and he couldn't find anything in Anaconda and he couldn't find anything in Marcus Daly Jr. But then he researched the, um, 
the brother-in-law was an ambassador, uh, U.S. ambassador. And there was a whole archive up in Missoula, Montana. And I'm, I know I'm going on a little bit of a tangent here, but it's very, very important to this story. Because in that archive, what we found were records that had not been open for over 70, 80 years. And they are the monthly records of this mine from 1908 to 1929. That includes all the surveyed assays, over 12,000 in the mine, um, what they took out, what they left, and really, that's why I call it brown fields. What we're doing right now is grid drilling that first zone. That's about a kilometer long, about 25 meters wide, and goes down um, about uh, 900 meters. So that's our drilling. We pretty much know where to drill mm -hmm. in the main zone, and it's just a definition. It's uh, It really is an, a unique um, situation, one that I haven't had before. What's the scale of this project, do you think, for you? What was it, was it going to be? Yeah, I, I think this is, uh, in my mind, and what we know, uh, what we know from this historical data, plus 65 more recent drill holes and 30 holes that we've drilled. We know, we know we're onto something that we think is big. It can be world class. We think it's a multi million ounce. Right. I, I feel comfortable saying that. I mean, we were um, working towards. Uh, that 43 101 study, but it's it's we've had a lot of experience <clears throat> um, developing deposits, mining deposits, and and you know you I I know of other deposits in Mexico that are multi million ounce, but you know they don't have the grade. What we see here is grade. Um, we see real good grade, and it's been demonstrated from our drill holes. Um, that this has a, a tenor of grade that I think will put it into that top five or ten percent of deposits, and always in my experience, grade is king. Um, you know, th there's an expression in the mining industry: grade will uh, will cover a multitude of sins. <laughs> so that's what we have. You, you may look at some M and A uh, around similar type projects just for just for cash or cash flow, but. The real focus has got to, you know, remain as Los Ricos because of the sheer scale of this. Is that that's still the thinking? That, that's correct. And in in, right. in in my experience, my opinion, um, I think the real value that's created in the mining industry is from kind of the discovery. And here, we've all, we've gone beyond discovery. We in our first zone. We know that we have um, uh, we, we there, there was a mine there. We're drilling off that halo. But from discovery to building and to producing, I mean, that discovery to development to the point of producing, that's, that's where most of the value, that's where most of the value for the investors made. And then, and then there's the production and uh, obviously in the production phase, there's a lot more value made in it and, and on the execution. Right. But here we're, in a, here we're in a phase where we're going from uh, real discovery right up to uh, so tell me about this, um, Brad. You know, when we spoke, shares were at 34 cents. They're now at 42, almost at the, at the year high for you guys. You, have you been getting quite good traction, quite good reaction in the marketplace? I know you guys are big shareholders. I think inside, between insiders and yourself, you have 40% of the stock. You've got some nice institutional and you know, a bit of retail following you. So wh what, are, what are they saying to you? Are they saying, you know, just, you know what you're doing, crack on? Or... Uh, that have they got expectations of you? Um, I, I think a lot of, uh, especially institutional shareholders, uh, you know, they're people that have been with us for uh, and following our our companies for many years, from Gammon, Max Gold, Nayarit to uh, GoGold, and um, they know what to expect. I mean, we're uh, we're real developers. Um, we do build mines, and and I, I know, and I think our shareholders know that ultimately the real value is in having real assets and, and bringing those assets along uh, to the point where either they become mines or you're bought out by somebody else. And it's the same roadmap. So those investors are really, they're quite supportive and they're saying, do what you've done before. And uh, that's what we're doing. But you, what, you, what you did before, I, I quite like some of the structures that you have uh, created previously with Santa Protutis, for instance, you know, you, that, that was quite exciting. And you, you've got a track record of being quite creative with the way that you exit. 
here you're seeing a big project you've got the capability and we talked previously you know if you, you you've got to be prepared to build it out but have you got a better sense for now from when we last talk talked about what it is that you have here and what you might do in terms of that exit you just need to obviously drill a bunch more holes but have you got a sense of what the strategy could be don't have to tell me what it is but yeah um you know from um doing several of these we know that there's there's a checklist for everybody whether it's a major mining company or mid-tier there's a checklist and they look at a project and they look at um you know geologically grade um, you know, bulk mineable, open pit underground. Um, there's a big technical checklist. And, um, and and we go through that checklist and we know that to de-risk a project, we know the steps that you have to take to tick the boxes. And and ultimately, I mentioned it before, it's the ch same checklist that we use that we're following that road to building a project. So sometimes people will say to me, and they said a lot over the last 27 years, well, what's your what's your plan? You, you're you want to sell to a major, or you're going to build this? And I say, well, it's it's the same plan, because the major has the same checklist, and no, they just want to see how many check marks you have. No, so okay. what are we going to do? We're going to check the boxes, and we'll we'll see what happens. I get. I guess the question I'm asking is, and I'm sort of intrigued how management think is. It's kind of like management consultancy, which I've done. You, you pretty much work out the answer real quick. It's just how you then kind of pad out that report. You know, how quickly do management in mining work out what it is that they've got and have a sort of sense of where they need to go? Not just the the, the checklist, which I guess everyone has, but you you at what point do you work it work out what this could be for you? and say, well, we're, we're gonna maybe just navigate that path slightly differently because I think I know where this goes. How early on do you uh, come up with that? A while ago on this one. Right. Okay. Uh, this, this, one is, um, this one is a very, very unique situation. One that I have um, not had in my career before. There is enough historical data here and we have a, a strong team that when we look at this, we take that historical data and we model it. We, internally, we already have a number. Right. And and now we're, and that's, for us, we look at that and that's a very good number. And like I said, grade is king. Um, so we've built enough mines and we've developed enough mines. We know we have one of the top percentile projects right now. Now, we have a process we have to go through so that we can display what we have yeah. to the, the investment community and the, you know, the regulatory community. I mean, there's a, there's a process we can't just because from my experience, I see that we have something that is superior. And I think maybe one of the, the best one off the best or the best I've had in my career. Um, we're now going through that process so that we can, display it to the world that that, and that, if, if that, that gold show for example will be very important there we're preparing a lot for that gold show and the in big institutional show um that's in uh september and we want to roll this thing out right that, that's that's where i was getting to um brad because it's it, it's just it's fascinating to me that you know some companies can go through this process you're still a small company right you're sort of like 70 mark 70 mil market cap and you know probably some of that's due to the gold price going up since we last spoke and some of it's Due to your storytelling, um, who knows what that split is? But it, it's a case of some companies will go through a journey two, three years without actually knowing where they're going to end up, or you know, working to a plan which says we know what we've got, we know what we've got to do here specifically, and we know what the what the end point is. So everyone's working towards the same plan, and I, you know, that's what intrigues me about you guys. We, we've been here before, and yes, our market cap's only 70 million Canadian right now. Um, since the first of the year, we've moved from, we've doubled our market cap. And uh, we've doubled our market cap because um, at the first of the year, we had sold our development asset uh, to Agnico. We, we had bought it for 9 million, we sold it for 95 million in three years. So we're very happy with that. Yeah. And at that point, we had 46 million US in debt. 
because we have an operating mine and that's what it costs to develop that and build it. Um, so now we have no debt. We have a strong balance sheet and we're on to one of the best uh, assets I think I've had in my career. Uh, and, and we also have, we have a lot of experience in developing these. So, and like I mentioned, this is a unique situation, unique situation. And we're talking about one kilometer that we're drilling off in this zone right now. This well, it's about 3.2. We, we've um, we have a, another area called Sierra Colorado where we kind of more, that's your traditional kind of drilling over there, your kind of discovery drilling. Mm. And in one kilometer of this, I would call it brownfields delineation drilling on something because of this massive data that we discovered, we already basically know what's there and now we're grid drilling it off. So this is such a unique situation. Um, I can see the value that can create 70 million today. I've been here before with, with Gammon. We were at 70 million and we went into Ocampo and we were in the same kind of market, you know, at the bottom of the market, just turning. And, you know, we, uh, seven years later, we were at 2.1 billion. So we have a great opportunity here. Yeah. Um, and a great team. Yeah, you, you, you do. Like, I, like I, I buy the track record, I buy, I buy the team, you know, cash generative, you know, we, we get, getting to that point last week, is a massive opportunity. I think what you just said about timing it is, is really, really fascinating because, you know, we talked previously about where you thought you were in the marketplace or where the market was. Your share price has doubled since the beginning of the year. I guess you're going to tell me it's got a long ways to go. Um, you, you know, you you good for cash for now? Are you? Uh, we're we're very good for cash. We're not going up to right. raise cash. Um, we're uh, really, uh, you know, we are in a cyclic business. Timing's important. Yeah. Um, I always go with what I um, what I've said for years. Our timing's perfect. If you're there all the time, eventually it will be perfect. Right. But okay. We, good. We're, we're mining guys. We have to go with the down cycle. We have to go with the up cycle. Right now, I think we're coming out of the down cycle. And I think we're beautifully positioned with one of the, the best assets I've had in my career to ride into that up cycle, which I believe is going to come in the next 12 to 18 months. We're going to be solid into the up cycle. Um, this asset will have superior grade and uh, bulk mining and it, it's really going to be one of the assets out there um but uh yeah we couldn't be in a better place and we're not uh, we're not at our our knees we have a we have a strong balance sheet we have an operating mine that operating mine is is doing great right now we just put out a press release a couple of days ago yeah, we're so, at uh nice. best production that we've had uh in the mine's history that's great news okay so so let's talk about you know the other things that you need to do you, you like I say, great technical team. You've you've got access to a couple of markets. You know how to run mining. What are you doing in terms of talking to the marketplace? You've got Denver coming up for institutional guys, but what are you doing for the retail market? How are you getting out there and telling this story to them? We do a lot of roadshows ourselves. We just put them together and talk to people that we know because over the last uh, 20 years, we've raised over a billion bucks of equity. So we know a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But uh, Beaver Creek, Denver Gold Show. We were over in London recently at the one-to-one uh, -one conference. Yeah. Um, uh, so we're going out there and getting our story done. We're working on um, with some software right now that's called Verify, uh, which is a good visualization of what we're doing. You know, the, not the struggle for me, but what we try to achieve, and, and Steve is inter instrumental in this, is um, trying, I, I see it right now. I see what we have and I'm very, very excited about it. I know we're going to create great value here, mm -hmm. but what I see, I'm trying to get what I see visualized so I can show our institutional and retail investors, try to get across the point what I see. And I think the Verify is going to help with that. Yeah, I think Verify, Verify, Verify is a very good tool. Uh, like it and you know, a lot of people are starting to use it. It's, it's, as you say, it helps people visualize what's there under the ground. But what are you doing to talk to retail? Because obviously one-to-one -one has a bit of retail in London. I don't know what it's like in New York. I think it's early days there. Um, but how are you telling the story to that audience which is going to affect your liquidity? Because the institutions, they come in, big money, they sit on it, right? Because they, they see this. 
But the retail's got to drive the liquidity here and a bit more volume too, and that's what's going to drive the share price up. You've seen that work with companies like, you know, well, RNC is one that springs to mind, but, um, you know, what are you going to do similar to those sorts of companies? Yeah, we're, we're going to, and, and Steve is really the driver of this, but we're, we're going to push a lot more of, uh, a lot more media, um, a lot more, uh, you know, uh, the newsletter writers obviously are, as far as they tie into retail, it's important uh, that we get the newsletter writers. I, I'm a I'm a big institutional guy. I've raised a lot of money institutionally, yeah. um, and uh, but I have a strong team behind me, not just on the technical side. Uh, guys like Steve, who are, are very good at um, you know uh, newsletter writers, uh, driving some of the um, uh, social media even on uh, on the uh, retail side. Um, you know, see if we can do some uh, improvement in our U.S. Um, uh, trading, as far as you know, if uh, U.S. U.S. Uh, not say listing, but um, we're on the you know the the pink sheets, which we never we want to be on something a little bit um, uh, better received in the U.S. Um, okay. And I'm not we're getting a, a full listing in the U.S. right now, but uh, we want to make it easier for our U.S. Um, clients or customers or investors, sorry, to uh, trade in the US. Um, I, I think, uh, yeah, we're driving a lot of those points and we're in the development stage of that program right now. The summertime is is not a great time for, you know, a lot of marketing, but we're, we're doing as much as we can. And into the fall, we plan on, on pushing a big program of, um, uh, you know, that the investor, the retail investor can identify, can, can see, get visibility. Okay. Okay. Well, well, we'll look out for that. So, what are the things? What are the actual deliverables? Just a summary of the deliverables that we should be looking out for between now and the end of the year. Um, so, as as far as uh, the operating line, um, what we have been delivering, which is uh, better and better quarters, mm. um, it's it's a heat leach. So, all heat leaches in Mexico are seasonally affected by uh, the monsoon season which started at the end of June and goes until about the 15th of May, uh, September. Um, I'll tell you though, we're in the monsoon and the mine is doing great. Like it's, we're really, we've had five years of experience now and with that mine and we've, our operating procedures, it's doing, it's doing really, really well uh, right, right now. So not much of a hurdle there. Um, the SART plant at the operating mine, mm-hmm. that is the plant that will, extract a whole bunch of copper that we have in our system mm-hmm. and get us back a whole bunch of cyanide. So there's really, a, it's a, not an accounting inventory, but there's a big inventory over there of cyanide and copper when we turn that start on. And that'll be ready, we, we've said by the 1st of January. And, and when that turns on, it'll pay back in six months. On Los Ricos, um, we're drilling hole number 31 right now. We have two, two drill rigs going. We're, we're doing that, um, Brownfields drilling, mm-hmm. and we're going to step out a little bit too, and throw in a few holes there that are more discovery holes as well. And we'll be talking about some of those. We think there's potential that we're on to maybe another ore shoot, which hadn't been developed in the past. Um, so we're looking at the first quarter of 2020 mm-hmm. to publish a resource. Um, okay. We're leaning a lot on this data that we've acquired. And a lot of that data is not just um, sampling data. This was an operating mine from 1908 to 29. There's a ton of metallurgical data. And those that's one of the boxes you want to tick. I mean, you can have a great grade, and if you can't recover it, yep. it's waste. Yeah. So we've got a lot of um, heads, we got a lot of information on that as well. So we're gonna come up with a lot of comments as we compile this, and then we say, okay, this is what the metallurgy shows. Now we'll do testing to uh, demonstrate that, but we already know the answer. I couldn't, I can't say that enough. Where we're drilling right now, we basically know the answer before we're asking the question. Well, that, so, that's that's my sense of, of this, you know, when we spoke before, it's my sense, sense of the conversation from earlier. It feels like you know what you're doing, it's just you've got to go through a process which is understood to be able to go, I told you so. That's yeah, what it feels that, like to me. That's that's where we are. Brilliant. That's, that's where we are. We're, we're leaning right. a lot of history. We're leaning a lot in history on this project, 
And and I think that's the scene, the uh, theme, the wall behind me today. It's a, I'm in the lodge, a very historical lodge. So uh, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm on vacation today. I'm off to the mine on Sunday, but uh, beautiful. It's uh, history has a lot to do with what we're doing right now. Well, it, 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 it's it's historical data. You know, some people lean on history, others uh, lean on historical data to inform the future. This is so, data. This is historical yeah, data. No. Solid data which was done very well. Beautiful yeah. and, well, and well found. Um, Brad, I think that's a fantastic update. Um, I really appreciate it. You've got to keep us up to date, uh, especially around September time when you're coming back out to market. Um, I think a lot of our investors have been chasing us for information about you. Um, so it's you know, been great to have you on today, but you know, keep, keep that information coming. Well, we'll, we'll be doing that. We're very excited about the fall. You know, the summer, we're in a little bit of the summer doldrums. It's very quiet, but yeah. we're getting our ducks in a row. And Beautiful. the fall is going to be very exciting. Beautiful. It's very exciting. I think your share price has reflected that. Um, I, you know, let's see if that, you can keep that going. Love it. You bet. We will. Thanks very much for watching. We hope you enjoyed that. And, and if you did, please click the button in the corner of the screen to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also catch us on our website, cruxinvestor.com and Cruxcast, our podcast series. Plus most days you can catch us on LinkedIn and Twitter. We'd love getting your feedback, so please keep that coming and we'll speak to you again soon.